All right, hot takes on the 4th of July. I'm not even American, I'm Canadian. But I don't know why I had to say that. <laughs> First hot take is it is taking way too long to earn Jade weapon skins. We're halfway through the year and I haven't even earned one yet, though I am close. I can't quick play earn like a third of the Jade weapon credits or any amount greater than zero. I think this is a hot take because I do think Jade and Golden weapons should be a bit prestigious and require some input, like a lot of time spent into the game. You're rewarded for these weapons by playing lots of competitive. The only downside and the only caveat I will say is I hate the whole like legacy competitive point system and the new competitive system in terms of, you know, not being able to buy Jade with old competitive points, but the old new ones are only allowed to buy Jade and you have to wait till the next year when they release like a new color like Sapphire or something. And only then can the legacy be used to buy Jade. That's a whole different story. But the fact that you're halfway through the year and you haven't earned one yet, I think that's okay. I think it's just a matter of, you know, playtime, because right now you only earn your competitive points by winning. I think you earn 10 for a win and like five for a loss. I'm on my third Jade, but obviously my excuse is a little different. I mostly play comp and I play this game as like a job, right? Overwatch is, you know, content creation is my thing. So my circumstances are a little different, but all in all, unfortunately, quick play doesn't earn it and that's okay because it's supposed to feel a little prestigious. Hot take, I've played over 1500 games since Overwatch 2 release and I still haven't got the rank placement title. I've also been playing since day one and my opinion is just as valid as a ranked player. You play a lot of games, you, you basically just play like quick play arcade or whatever. You don't play ranked. I agree your opinion is valid as a ranked player. I would argue that you just we just don't have a definitive idea of what your skill range is but you can kind of ballpark it sort of if you play against certain opponents all the time on quick play and you're holding your own doing pretty well winning you know at least 50 percent of your games across you know your average platinum and gold enemies on quick play if you like you know look up their profile then sure you, you know your opinion is just as valid you're probably a metal ranked player and your opinion is valid in that capacity with that sort of like baseline i don't know who says your opinion isn't valid and we need players who you know play different aspects of the game in my eyes you're more of a casual gamer if you don't play that much ranked you know you hop into some quick play play a little bit of arcade here and there you're a casual overwatch player and that's okay like you are actually the majority of players i think over 50 percent of the players simply just play quick play and maybe they'll do like their 10 placement games to get an idea but even then 10 placement games aren't even enough for the uh, matchmaker to have a confident idea of what kind of rank you should be in you know your opinion does matter i don't know where you're getting people uh, saying your opinion isn't valid, but let's move on. Hot take, the game does not have an identity. It used to be a competitive game, but now it feels like they're trying to capitalize on casuals while also keeping their core players. You can't please everybody. They need to lean into one or the other. Another hot take, I don't think this game used to even be considered competitive. I uh, We've said this before, but I've always argued that Overwatch is one of the most casual live service FPS games past and present the competitive scene you know five years ago was also had a lot of arguments saying this game isn't competitive they don't care about competitive because they leave brig at the state she ends for over a year and goats was a thing for over a year and you know double shield is a thing they're not balancing for competitive they only balance towards casuals people have been saying this game has been casual for years and i tend to agree this game definitely leans more into the casual player base and for good reason, I mean, I'm sure they have their data, but like I said earlier, like over half their players mostly play quick play anyways. So there you go. Hot take, Sombra is a broken or OP hero. You always see a Sombra in a team that loses because she's a safe pick. She's low risk slash high reward. She can reduce the target's HP by 50 to 100% before that person can fire a shot at her. And she can remove any remaining damage such as Anna shot with her teleport. An assassin hero with mo movement, invisibility, and hacking should have a maximum of 200 HP, in my opinion. Yeah, counter hot take, I don't think Sombra is, in her current state right now, is broken or OP. She's very finicky because you're right, you know, having movement, invisibility, and hacking is a very powerful trait, and it needs to be very carefully balanced with the amount of damage output she can do. Her output is max, is increased you know, or at least le more lethal to lower ranks because, you know, teammates don't peel for you as much and they don't punish her, you know, all in positioning as much. But in the higher ranks, you know, if you just turn around a little bit, get a little help or play a hero that, you know, fights her back and she's forced to TP out, the TP is way more punishable now. And I hot take, I think Sombra's a lot more fair now to play against compared to pre-rework Sombra, where she just teleports for free across the other side of the map and comes back and does the gameplay rotation at the cost of having more downtime, of course, right? Because the Sombra usually TPs all the way out there. She's got to 
throw a translocator down, rehack a health pack or whatever, and then go back in. Versus now, you're kind of in the fight a little bit more. And I think the rework was largely a success. I do find her pretty fun. And I don't think 200 HP is the right nerf in her direction. I still think she's very punishable. And she's in this weird state where like, the pro play, pro pro play, where they can 3-2-1 capitalize on the coordination hack, 3-2-1 kill somebody. There, she's like very, very good. And then in high ranked, ranked play, like, you know, Diamond Masters, Grand Master, Champion level, she's like, okay, she's like fine on this patch because, you know, she can obviously get away with a lot and, you know, she can turn off a lot of tanks with her with her hack and her her swap to that uh, and that and that option, but kind of falls down a little bit serviceable. And then she goes back up in metal ranks where then she always feels OP for a lot of players. I, you know, you guys follow this channel. I read a lot of Overwatch University stuff every week and every week there's somebody asking how to deal with sombra because your average silver or gold player not trying to be rude but like they have a lot of problems dealing with her they don't know what to do because like they they just keep falling for the invisibility they don't know how to deal with the invisibility they don't know how to deal with the burst of the virus and they don't know how to fight back and you know punish her positioning it may sound hot take a little bit but it's it's a little bit of a skill issue it doesn't mean you can't solve it but it is, it is a little bit of a skill issue and you just need a little bit of help a little bit of swapping to some picks that can do a little better and react a little bit. You have to counter strafe a little bit, make it so she doesn't get perfect tracking on you so she can't 250 to zero you. And then if you shoot her back a little bit, she'll probably panic and try TPing away and her TP doesn't even go that far. You can chase it down, depending on the hero you pick and stuff. So yeah, hot take, not broken right now. Hot take, lever punishment is lowering match quality. Whenever someone enters a quick play game and is underperforming, uh, they get frustrated, type GG, go next in chat, and continue to fume instead of leaving and having someone else who is better take their place two seconds later. Match quality would increase if people were allowed to leave the game. Additionally, even if you do not want to participate in a backfill game, you should be able to leave that as well. A five second downtime is equivalent to one death which will happen with or without that person leaving. This is certainly a hot take because there's a few parts I wanna you know, unpack here. If someone enters a quick play game and is unperforming, right? And they don't feel like playing and then they play, yes, your match quality will suck. You say someone else better who will take their place two seconds later. Is it? How long does it take for someone to realistically backfill load in, check the comp, pick something reasonable, and be effective right off the rip. It could be equally as bad. It could also be 10, 20, 30 seconds, and 30 seconds in, let's say, a control game is already more than half the round. The quality of that match is already gonna, are already screwed to begin with. And third, if people were allowed to leave the game, it would get abused very, very heavily. Like, if there's no punishment, you're always able to leave the game. You're, every game, you're gonna constantly, because if there's no punishment for that, people will always do it and the entire quality of the match is compromised no matter what because they, they can just get away with it. You're constantly gonna be having 4v5s and it's gonna be no fun for either team. So you need to like draw the line somewhere. No punishment is not a good thing. Also the last part, five second downtime is not one death. Uh, a death is equivalent to like a 20 second downtime. 10 seconds to respawn, 10 seconds to probably get back into the fight in a meaningful way. That's why I say 20 seconds. Hot take, the higher you climb, the more toxic it gets. I've noticed that since I went from silver to gold to diamond, everyone is much more toxic and vocal about their issues, begging swaps, blaming, and just being too serious about minor stuff, like drop the ego. I think this is a hot take, simply because this is anecdotal and it just really depends on the lobby you get, what region you play, what platform you're on. Arguably, you know, the higher you climb, I would say sometimes the less toxic it gets, anecdotally of course, because nobody talks anymore in voice chat past like masters it, the occasional game somebody actually says or types something but for the most part no one uses their voice anymore there are issues with the automated you know defense matrix ban system that they've been uh they've had out a lot of people have been complaining about getting falsely banned i've read some of those complaints some of them do seem pretty valid in terms of like it automatically doing wrongful ban so that's contributing to the reason why no one's talking anymore and yeah i i just think it kind of depends i will say there is some merit to it because players in diamond anecdotally speaking and based on you know what the community sentiment is is that in diamond they're at, they're at that funny rank where 
you know, they're pretty good at the game and they feel like they know how to optimally play and make the correct play that maybe a master, a grandmaster, or a higher ranked player would make, but they can't execute the optimal play because not everybody's up to par or keeps up with it. Because there are people who can get the diamond without even like watching a lick of pro play or a lick of high level play to understand what's optimal. They're just able to scoot by with like a 50% win rate, 51% win rate doing just enough. And because they're not on the same page, people get very toxic and vocal and blah, 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 blah. Hot take, I like that mythic skins are expensive because I like the idea of people having to earn them through completing the battle pass slash playing the game. Interesting. A lot of people would obviously disagree because they hate the price points that Overwatch has put up. And I've said this before, if something used to be free, you can't win the 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 public opinion, the court of public opinion. That's a funny word that everyone's been funny phrase people have been using around uh, lately. But you can't win the the public favor back if something used to be free that you charge something for it. Now, Overwatch being a free to play game, yes, they're charging for cosmetics and with a different monetization model with the loot boxes uh, versus the battle pass. But you know, my hot take is that I also think it's fine the way mythic skins are. You earn a mythic skin per season if you buy the battle pa battle pass. I think that's fine. We can have a separate argument on you know what a price point of a battle pass and skin should be now my stance on this is i can't assign what's worth and valuable to a person because it depends on where they live and their you know their economic social economic status like for me you know assigning ten dollars for a bit of cosmetics for a free game is fine for me but like you know is incredibly more expensive depending on the country you live in and that's where it can get a little finicky so i'm not the one to judge for that maybe localized prices solves that but you know anyways that's another can of worms to answer your hot take i agree i i don't say i don't want to use the word expensive is okay it's just i think it's fine with the idea of having it in the battle pass that part i agree with hot take if you're swapping to ego duel and lose your rank should go down significantly with the modifier diffed to discourage tilting from ego duels all right this is a bit of a silly one all right moving on hot take goats was the most goaded meta there has ever been in overwatch i just don't like dying like i do now that's because in goats you never died because everything just survived because you have three freaking tanks and three supports that are all just piggybacking off each other nothing died until everything died you know what i mean the grab hits then the diva bomb then the rind shatter and then they have transcendence and then they have coalescence and then they have nano boost or whatever the hell they're running in goats anyways goats was a subjective meta some people loved it some people hated it just depends on what hero you main zarya mains probably loved it people dps mains hated it because they had to go to brig jail or whatever Ooh, this one's truly a hot take i think sigma's gravitic flux change isn't as bad as people say it is the alt is still counterable by a lot of abilities support alt still counter it and there's so many movement abilities that can help you escape it so people shouldn't be saying there is no more counterplay because there is still so many counters to the ultimate so this this person shady is in reference to the sigma change that got reversed which was that you were able to pick people up with flux without having true line of sight at the center now i think this is truly a hot take because when people said there should there's no counterplay yes you're right there is certain abilities that can still cancel it but that's dependent on if Sigma's in line of sight. A Sigma can press the ability and just completely hide, never have any line of sight. It lowered the skill ceiling of it. It's not very hard to point and click, but like picking the right time to do it and being it so incredibly forgivable and then picking someone up around the corner when the enemy was making the right play by breaking line of sight and still getting picked up by the flux was incredibly bad and annoying to play around and play against. And it felt very cheap and unfair for the enemy team. So while you're right, it's the, the cheapness of it that made it feel, uh, and, the, and the cheesiness of it that made it feel really bad. And that's why uh, I everybody thought that the change was bad, including me, and I'm glad they reversed it. The ultimate is still very powerful as it is, and Sigma's still a very good hero uh, without that change. It was unnecessary. Hot take, tanks are fine. The players have the wrong expectation from the role just because of the name, tank they don't grasp the finesse behind it and complain easily you know you're partially right because the name of tank but then like why define it as a tank in that case if they're just glorified dps's i think they should have the archetype of a tank which is you know to kind of soak up damage take space and stuff and i think you're partially right in the fact that tanks are fine in a vacuum based on raw power level they're fine in that regard they can definitely top up the damage charts and you know be a very strong contributing factor in a match the thing that people have the issue with is the fun and the player experience playing the tank a lot of times you just sit there 
and you play the the cover watch or you just hold your shield watch as Ryan and sometimes there's just times where you can't do much but you are being effective it just doesn't it just doesn't feel very good and then there's times where like you know you're doing pretty well and they're able to you know counter swap a few choices that make your experience pretty miserable because the way your tank kit was designed is that these specific heroes completely can shut down this or that ability or like your effectiveness. That being said, I do think it's pretty tricky to make tanks more appealing because as I've said before, and as many game designers have said, tanks by tradition, by design are the least desirable roles across all genres of games, not just tank, uh, not just first person shooters, MMOs, and any other game that requires a tank. It's a very thankless job. It's a very thankless role. I don't know what they could do to make it more fun, but you know, that's why I'm not a hero designer. I'm just a stupid influencer with a stupid opinion. Hot take, to be honest, I think I liked the cast nade at the beginning of Overwatch 2 the best. The one that just homed on and did a ton of damage. It was the only one that didn't horrifically counter Reaper. Actually, Reaper could outplay it really easily because Wraith cleansed it away. Wow, that is certainly a hot take because that nade at the beginning of Overwatch 2 was ridiculous. 131 damage that homed in and was basically free, which means one follow-up shot, dead. I mean, it did too much damage and it was very cheesy because you didn't have to like aim it necessarily. It just kind of like aimed for you and just homed in on them. It was free guaranteed damage, low skill floor kind of ability with high reward. I didn't like it, certainly a hot take. Okay, last hot take, Hinder might be the worst thing they've added in a long time. Unless you count MAGA, <laughs> then it's the second worst. Ah, this one's tough because like, the thing with player psychology in any game, not just Overwatch, is like people don't like their character to be turned off. Like they don't like things that disable or disarm or remove their ability to have a control of their character, whether that's stuns, freezes, roots and stuff. People hate CC because it feels annoying when you get hit by one. If you play League, if you play Valorant and you get like your vision block from smokes, people just hate being hindered or inhibited and hinder in my opinion, as a hot take, is a necessary evil. Maybe it doesn't just strictly belong on cast, and maybe they should have all tanks and all supports, you know, in that supporting or that tanky role to have, you know, inhibiting abilities. Maybe it's better off, you know, applied and left in that category, but it's a necessary evil or else the game just becomes pure mobile watch, pure dive watch, pure tracer and anything that's mobile because there's nothing that slows them down reliably. And then that can be fun for a small select group of players who love high mo mobility and high movement. But this game is casual and it's supposed to be accessible by many, many players of different backgrounds, whether you have hand injuries or not, and you can play simple heroes and still be effective. Uh, you kind of need a little bit of CC for that reason. Just my take on it. Anyways, that's it for the hot takes of the week. Thanks for listening to me. And yes, I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan. Go Jays go, even though our team sucks. Bye.